Hi there, my name's Tim, Dr Tim Montgomery, and I'm the politics teacher here at Chapel Town Academy. I'm going to take you a few little bits and pieces about what we do on the course, what kind of things we get up to, how we work, and where this might lead you. As we, before we get going, uh, Mr President, do you have any questions? Good question, Mr President. Let's find out. We do three papers in politics, looking at three different areas. Governments and politics means different things. Government means how do we structure our politics, what happens in parliaments, what happens in governments and so on. Politics is all about how do people vote, how do elections work, what are political parties and pressure groups. So we begin by looking at the United Kingdom and how our system works. We then transfer over to the United States of America and see their system before comparing the two. Our systems are uh, totally different from each other and so that gives us a chance to look at the strengths and weaknesses of different types of system. And then we finish that off with all the political ideas that go behind that. What are do the ideas of socialism, liberalism and conservatism, as well as our fourth option, anarchism, mean for the way that we organise our politics? Now that's also a good question Mr Johnson. Thank you Prime Minister. Probably the easiest way is to look at a particular case study, one area of something that we look at. In politics, we refer to three branches of government. And by that, we mean the legislature, so those who make the laws. In Britain, Parliament. In America, Congress. We refer to the executive, those who carry out the laws. In Britain, it's a collective executive, the cabinet with the prime minister at the head. In America, it's a single person executive with the president as the sole member of that executive. And then we have the judiciary. Those who interpret the laws and the top two courts in the, in the UK and US are the Supreme Courts. Now, this raises some interesting questions. The legislature, Parliament, Congress is working for the people. The judiciary is outside of politics and must remain so. So a key question for us is, how is that executive controlled? How much power does the executive have over the people? And what are the role of the other two branches? Now, there are two ways that we might do that, what we call a fused system and a separated system. In one, the executive, the government has to be part of that legislative branch. Boris Johnson is also an MP as well as being Prime Minister. In a separated system, you cannot be president and a senator at the same time. Now, that has, each of those has some strengths. Every Wednesday, Boris Johnson has to face questions in Parliament, Prime Minister's question time, and decisions can be made quickly. In the alternative system, where they are separated out, Congress can get on and do what it needs to do on behalf of the people without interference. Now, the flip side of that is that in our system, in the UK system, the dominant party can tell the legislature what to do. So is Parliament really doing its job? And in America, if the two branches can't find a way of working together, the whole system just stops. Now, this is serious. This matters. Let's go back and remember two very sad case studies. In Britain, we had a mass shooting in a place called Dunblane in a schoolroom. In America, there are shootings all the time. Almost overnight, Parliament had stopped the use of guns in Britain. In America, the president at the time, President Obama, burst into tears in a press conference because he just couldn't stop this kind of thing happening. So clearly, our British system's better. But there's a flip side. What if that getting that thing done, what moving things through, is all about ending your human rights. In America, that's virtually impossible to do. So what would we get up to? In a typical lesson, we might be playing games, having discussions. We work on structured learning from worksheets and we'll look at essay questions. It's all an essay based subject. And how can we do that? Well, because our class sizes are typically about 10 to 15. So we're a good working group. And where might this take you? Well, there are several different careers that uh, politics at level would really be a good start with. Never know, we might even have a Chapel Town Academy politician one day. 
So what do I suggest you do now? Well, first off, read the news. There's plenty going on at the moment. You may even have noticed there's a US general election and congressional election going on. You can go and find out a bit more about the course at that website. And also find out a bit, little bit more about your politics. Where do you stand? What are your interests? So I'm looking forward to seeing you all soon. Don't forget, apply to do politics at Chapeltown Academy.